welcome back. Now, as the new season is slowly approaching us, and for some people it has already started, for some the last one never ended, <laughs> but if you're like me and the weather is never good enough for you and you just don't want to get your ass wet and your bike dirty and you don't want to get fenders, then it's still coming, it's still slowly coming and you hope for the better future. Uh, and all I can really do now is just sit around and remember all the great times I had last year and all the amazing experiences. So this is what I'm going to share with you today. And since I got a lot of comments and feedback and questions regarding my 320k ride, people reach out to me which is really unusual and since i also don't think that it was anything special like i truly believe that people make a big deal of something that's fairly simple and easy i'm going to finally share my experience with you like in depth something that i wanted to do after i made that video but i never got around and doing so and first of all obviously a list of disclaimers. <laughs> I'm doing this for the sole purpose of sharing what I learned, sharing what I experienced, the mistakes that I made and hope that possibly you will avoid them or maybe it would inspire you to do something similar. And also so that people would understand that such endurance events, if you properly prepare yourself for them and if you have a certain purpose behind it, it's a piece of cake like it's seriously it's not hard and i really want to say that anybody can do it but if you're not really physically capable for it if you, or if you don't have the right mentality it won't be easy okay it was easy for me to a certain point <laughs> but overall it is possible and also i'm not doing this to you know show off or you know create attention around me. I always try to not make videos about me. Um, I'm just the person behind what I did. And it's also important to mention that I'm not claiming to know everything about a topic. I'm not saying that I'm an experienced endurance cyclist. <laughs> By no means, no. I'm just a passionate person for cycling. And also some details might not be relatable to you personally. If you wanted to do something similar in your area, like for example, the landscape may vary. For me, it was pretty much flat. So this will be relatable to everybody from Latvia. Hello, guys. <laughs> and also my background in endurance sports and how it may have influenced the experience that I had. So keep all of that in mind whilst listening and before commenting and I think I'll split the story in three to four parts because otherwise it would be just unscheduled round for two hours and the first part as you can see by the title is preparation and purpose now I got inspired to involve myself in such a challenge for quite some time before I even decided that yeah this, this is going to be the day when I finally do it and I think before I even start telling the story I have to put out my Strava ride before people start even taking me seriously so here you have here's the data it happened if it was on Strava it did happen. I believe my first hearing of people doing such epic rides was obviously Harley Johnstone and I remember him putting up videos around January, February, December, the Australian summer where he would go on these epic rides, 24-hour rides and sometimes he would be non-stop, sometimes he would stop in the middle of nowhere and sleep on the background and at that moment I knew that one day I'm going to fucking do the same thing. And later on I found out about Ultraman and Ironman challenges and you know, virtual was a massive influence so I always knew that I would want to do something similar one day. And last spring, I started to get more and more into cycling. I was doing a 100k ride most weekends with a buddy of mine. And I believe that really helped me to build my endurance and just get used to being in the saddle for so long. And leading up to that August day when I decided to do a 320k ride, I was cycling around 100 to 200 case a week and that was my physical preparation for the ride now what really pushed me to do it 
<laughs> was actually a funny story. I was in my summer house. I couldn't cycle a lot there, so I was miserable. And I was checking out Strava and one of my friends did a 150k ride. And I believe the other one did something similar uh, on a mountain bike. And at that moment, I realized that once I get back to the city, I'll get my bike and I'll just go on a 320k ride and nobody will fucking surpass it. <laughs> So that was my motivation, thank you girls. And I also wanted to prove myself that I can actually do it. Like in my mind, 100% I knew that I'm going to make it, but I had to have my Strava ride as legit proof, so I got that. And yeah, basically that's my motivation and sort of preparation before the ride. And I just also want to emphasize how freaking important mentality is. Like if you believe in yourself, if you know in your mind that you're going to make it, you're going to make it. I mean, you can train fuck all and still make it. Like Abdullah and Joey Carbstrong are the perfect examples of this. I mean, you can train heaps, you can do 300K weeks, do intervals, all sorts of jazz, but if you don't have the mental capacity up here to get through the pain, to get through that long stretch of road with nothing to focus on, just the road ahead basically, then you're not going to make it. You just have to get comfortable being alone, unsupported on your bike, in the middle of nowhere for hell knows how long. <laughs> and when you can master that, then you can go as far as you fucking want. So yeah, that's all mentality and what's also important is how you take care and nourish your body beforehand because what I learned is that the food, the water, the rest you get before the event is even more important than what food uh, or how much water you get in the actual event. Putting the right nutrition in, getting enough sleep, being hydrated leading up to the event directly affects how will you perform. and. Fortunately, I'm always conscious about all of those three things. So basically what I do on a day-to-day basis is drink around three to four liters of water. Depending on my activity level, I usually eat around two to three and a half thousand calories a day. Plant-based, vegan, obviously, if you haven't noticed already. And it's usually 80, 10, 10 to 95, 5, just because that's that's what works for me personally and I try to sleep uh, from 8 to 10 hours a day and go to bed around 9 to 10. That's just perfection, ideal. That's what I do and did before the ride and I believe that gave me a massive advantage over someone that isn't consciously taking care of their body needs. So yeah, make your own judgments. I mean, there was a study where they took athletes who slept uh, six to eight hours a night and they put them on nine to ten hours a night and the effect was similar to if they were taking EPO so seriously make your own judgments. <laughs> to go with preparation it's also important to know your route not necessarily every single little detail but at least know where the nearest shops are uh, how long are the stretches of road or between cities the winds that's really important. <laughs> Think about the landscape, look up the weather forecast for that day, make a list of things that you might need in the ride, don't overpack, uh, it's better to have less than too much. <laughs> also think about the place where you will store all those things. I had a saddlebag. Uh, you can go with panniers. A backpack is a bad idea. I made a video about what I took on my ride so you can check it out. I'm not going to get into that here. Um, also think about lighting because you're probably going to go out in the dark and come back in the dark so that's important. Also clothing. Don't overdress or underdress depending on the weather. Um, sunscreen if it's sunny out there, you know, not here in Latvia. Planning all of that out beforehand will save you time on the actual event. And before you do any of this, just think of the reason why are you doing it? Because this is the exact thing that will keep you moving when it's really hard. Uh, one good saying that I constantly kept in my mind was just eliminate the time and distance remaining. You're so privileged to do such a thing, to have the energy, to have the physical ability. So just enjoy what you have and 
move forward. It's just pedaling, you know, you're just sitting, you're not doing anything anyways. Just sitting and pedaling and you can keep on doing it for how long you want. Mind is the limit. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's all I wanted to share regarding purpose and preparation. Part one done. Um, I think the next part will be focus and mentality. I'll leave the technical details for the last part. Well, maybe the last part will be my goals for 2017. So yeah, <laughs> be vegan, get amongst it, man. I hope you got something out of this video. Kind of fuck up, <laughs> bye. Just skip the pepperoni, keep the dairy aside. I know what you're thinking. That's bruschetta. Now nah, we got the soy cheese counterfeit cheddar. Hook up the nachos, guacamole tacos, avocado sushi, domo origato. What do you eat? What about meat? What about protein? What about cheese? Can you eat fish? Do you eat this? Would you eat that? Are you a